better buckle up. Adventure calls. Hi everyone, me again, Doris Raymond from The Way We Wore in Los Angeles. We want to do uh, a brief conversation on um, flight attendant uniforms. Uh, the wonderful thing about collecting vintage is there's so many subcategories. I mean, everything from Hawaiiana to, um, I mean, purses to hats, all these sub subcategories as well. And several years ago, uh, I came across uh, a grouping of flight attendant uniforms that I was drawn to partly because of nostalgia, because I remember. Uh, when I in the 60s when I was a kid uh, going on planes and seeing these wonderfully colorful women who were very I mean I, w I wouldn't say they were sexy to me but they were sexy and um, to see them available really struck a chord of familiarity with me I also felt like they were a good investment because they're in their own way iconic so um, I acquired over a period of time, uh, several different groupings, and they're all pretty much clustered in the same time frame, from the mid-60s to the early 70s, uh, which was definitely um, a very fond time for me. Um, I, I actually want to start talking about just the basic stuff, and then I'll show you what we have. Um, their uniforms was appropriate for that time period, they go back to the 1930s. And um, initially, they were based on a nurse uniform because it gave it a formality and uh, was practical. Uh, and it really signified the service in industry. In the 40s and 50s, the silhouette shifted to uh, more of a military, uh, obviously, for the times. And it was great because it it gave the impression of authority, but it wasn't, uh, they didn't have uniforms that made them seem unapproachable. So there was a, you know, um, it's a dichotomy in a way, but they were, it managed to do it with the type of designs that they created. I don't have a lot of pieces, uh, actually, I don't have any pieces that are older than the, I would say, mid to late 50s, early 60s, but. Mike is going to put some great references on the description. So if you're curious to look um, for more info, you can. I had no idea that the San Francisco International Airport in the Harvey Milk Terminal, and in it they had several pieces that I actually have in my collection. So uh, one of the articles shows the pieces in the um, air terminal exhibition. I highly recommend you go look at that if you're interested. There's uh, such a wide range of designers that got involved in creating uh, these flight attendant uniforms. Everyone from, uh, it's hard to believe, Edith Head who is how many times an Academy Award winning designer. She designed Delta from 1959 to 1965. Uh, Howard Greer, who's also a noted uh, costume designer, and Don Loper, who many of you may recognize his name from I Love Lucy. Loper designed the Pan Am uniforms. But if you look, I had no idea the range of designers that designed. Hermes designed for Cathay, uh, Pacific and um, Balenciaga designed for Air France. Christian Dior during Mark Bowen's term uh, designed for Air France as well. Even YSL, Pierre Cardin, Mary Quant, Halston, Vivian Westwood, Christian Lacroix, and more recently Ralph Lauren and Zach Posen. Zach did uh, Delta. We'll start with this one, which is Pierre Balmain and Don Loper. It's a combination. And uh, this uniform was designed for TWA. And the tailoring on this is really beautiful. It's, it's quality. And one of the things that I was surprised to know when I did my research is that the uniforms were not like on a rack that you had to pick and choose. They were literally made for the person. So it's bespoke. And um, I think that's why a lot of these things are not available, because the people that had them made for them treasure them. You know, to have something that's custom made for your body is is a treat. This side we have uh, 
Amelia Pucci design for Branifair lines. And although the hat doesn't really go with this ensemble, Pucci designed um, six collections. And this is from his classic collection, which was done between 1968 and 1970. And I'm not really sure which collection this fabulous cotton velveteen hat comes from, but it's definitely in that time period that he was there. It is a uh, airline attendant uniform. And we have one of those uh, carry bags. Now on the rack, we'll start with more Pucci, which is this great jod, uh, like jodhpurs, and um, very practical, you know, to go through and taking care of all the people on the plane. I love this silhouette. And we have, believe it or not, Pierre Balmain for TWA with a big, bold label that says that. And you can see the similarity in the design and the rectangular bound buttonholes. This one's really heavy. And part of this ensemble is kind of a mix and match scenario. Then, just to show you, TWA would do these kind of faux slips that are the blouse. So you'd wear your skirt, obviously, over that, and then the jacket, so this flap would stick out with the logo. I love this one. This is Dalton. And Dalton designed uh, TWA in 1968. Uh, they designed all kinds of accoutrements to go with their ensemble. So this is obviously the coat and the scarf with a belt and a headband. But if that wasn't enough, we have the dress as well, which is not a skort, but it looks like a skort. And then Dalton also designed a way more colorful. This is almost like a cape coat, which goes with either this or this. And these were actually on exhibition at the airport in San Francisco. This has um, a cap and a scarf as well. So one of the things I love about doing the research before we shoot these YouTube videos is I find things that are really wonderful tidbits of information. In this case, I found out that uh, when Pucci was hired by Braniff to design his collections, Braniff in 1965 declared, quote, the end of the plain plain. So they were determined to create color and uh, visual stimulation, everything from cocktail napkins to the uh, flight attendant uniforms. And so you see that a lot of people followed suit, literally and figuratively, <laughs> um, after Braniff's changing of the pretty quiet and conservative uniforms that existed beforehand. Um, and then, shockingly, <laughs> these uniforms, which are late 60s, this is a uniform by Valentino. We have the coat with the belt and these fabulous gold buttons. We have the pants, the dress with its belt, and we have mini dresses, two different colors, which is great. We also have some other leisure pieces and silk blouses with the Valentino lo logo. Hainan um, Airlines had the Chinese designer Lawrence Xu using uh, Chang Sam. So you'll see in f a lot of the foreign cultures, foreign airlines, they use silhouettes that are very indigenous to the culture. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that when I was a kid, there was a total play on sexiness 
for airline stewardesses. Uh, coffee, tea, or me was a, a slogan that I remember. Um, and if you think about how that's been toned down, although I think British Airways or uh, one of the British airlines still really plays up the sexiness of, of the women that, that work on board. But for the most part, uh, you have icons like Britney Spears, who um, is known for her toxic video. The um, airline ensemble that she used in that is really part of pop culture history. <laughs> Valerie Steele uh, said that it was the 60s and the jet set age when traveling was advertised as a luxury. So uniforms were really supposed to inform that uh, and to really uh, resonate that. And um, a lot of it had to also do with the space age, you know. One of the things that I really love about the sociological aspect of fashion is that flight attendant uniforms were supposed to reflect young and independent women uh, because being an attendant was a way for women to travel and live on their own uh, although the irony is that they were still kind of subservient in a way with the serving of uh, you know and taking care of people's needs but as uh, flight attendant women could take classes and fly with the military, I did not know this. Braniff Airlines flew troops to Vietnam and flight attendants were able to get cards from the U.S. Air Force referencing the Geneva Conventions so that they could claim protections as prisoners of war. That's unbelievable. I had no idea. Over the course of the war with Vietnam, flight attendants flew in combat over 200 times. I should also mention that the fabrics used after this time period uh, were mostly polyester due to the ease of care, just throw it in a washing machine. Uh, these other pieces clearly had to be dry cleaned because they're wool or wool blend. And um, I honestly have no idea what, uh, how much of a fever there is for collecting flight attendant uniforms. I think that there's big interest, but I've never really looked. I just thought it might be an interesting episode to share my small collection with you guys. So if you're new to watching our YouTube videos, thank you very much for your attention. If you liked it, would you please give us a thumbs up and also subscribe. And uh, we look forward to reading your comments. And if possible, I'll try to answer uh, questions or comment back when I have the time. So I really appreciate your interest and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much. Bye. Better buckle up. Adventure calls.